Good morning. Hi there. It's Valerie Ling here. Hello. I hope you can join me live if any of you are out there. It is a little bit early where I am in Sydney, New South Wales, Australia. It is right about the time when people are getting ready to do the school drop off or on their commute into work for those of us who are actually getting into work. I've had two great events already back from sabbatical, uh, one at, uh, well, both of them at seminaries, and um, it's really fantastic to actually see how students' thinking have progressed over the years and the questions that you get, or I, I've been getting um, from the last two events, have actually been thought-provoking, which has required for me to actually come back and think through a little bit deeper and go, oh, that was probably a new question and it's worthwhile um, unpacking it. So this morning I spent some time, um, as I don't always uh, do this well, but I've had a, a quiet start and I've been thinking about um, some of the questions that have come up from the last two sessions where I've been talking to students who are really preparing for a life of service. Now, um, when you do this, uh, when you actually enter seminary um, and, and, and think about actually serving uh, in some kind of church uh, ministry or some kind of Christian ministry, it's quite a big sacrifice. For most of the students, they would have come from uh, a different training pathway that would have launched them into a vocational pathway with established careers and established um, well, financial blueprints as well. But for them to actually disrupt that pathway and train again to go out for a life of service is a pretty big deal. So one of the common questions I get asked is, what if we if we get this far and we've made the decision to really dedicate and commit our lives to serving others is it actually okay to think about self-care and resilience and pacing and um pulling back if we are you know, if our health is compromised because surely we can keep going. So there's two things I want to share with you today uh, in, on further reflection of this question. One is the concept of self-care not being about a recreational activity, but really about uh, something that I like to talk about, stewardship of resources. It falls into a model of actually being um, good stewards of the resources that we have. So if I were a carpenter, and I am not, I would probably want to take really good care of my tools. There's a high investment in those things. You buy good tools um, and you want to have the confidence that those tools will deliver the service that other people have engaged you to do. Uh, you probably have a ute that you want to take care of. You want to make sure that you send that for regular servicing. The tires are checked, etc., etc. When you are in the kind of profession that is a helping profession or a caring profession, the tools are you. You, your voice, your body, your health, your eyesight, your eyesight, your ears. It's you, your body mostly. And of course, the knowledge that you bring. And so um, much like a, a workman uh, or a handyman who, uh, or handy person, who has tools that they need to watch over, um, we need to be good stewards of the resources and the tools that we have when we serve one another. So that's the first thing that I want to say is that it is about thinking deeper about our bodies and our mental health being the resource that we bring to the picture when we serve. The second thing I want to talk about is a concept of what is preventable attrition and what is non-preventable attrition. So attrition meaning why we would exit or why we would stop doing what we do, attrition, right? And non-preventable attrition has got to do with the reasons we might stop doing what we do simply because things are out of our control. So um, a pandemic is out of our control. Some of our health situations might be out of control. There are certain health conditions that just spring up on us and you know, there's, there's not a lot we, we could do or knew to do. Um, we just get sick. Uh, Non-preventable uh, attrition uh, are things that actually 
if we practice good hygiene, if we look a little bit deeper into what we need, if we think about you know, how our relationships are going, we can actually put some things into place that prevents or certainly slow down, slows down the reasons for why we might exit our work. And I suppose I put burnout in that category because it is an occupational health hazard. There are some things that we can actually be doing. Now, if in the course of doing our life service or, or providing a life service, there is a, a non-preventable reason. So we might get sick um, and there's nothing much we could have done or life circumstances change. Um, you know, things happen in our family life that we couldn't prevent. Those are things that, well, there's very little that you can sleep, eat, exercise, or um, you know, uh, 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 practice resilience strategies um, that could have prevented that. So when we're actually lo looking at burnout, it does sit in a different category because managing stress and learning to cope and understanding the expectations that we place on ourselves that are unrealistic, these are things that we can work on, that we can actually be aware of, and in combination, therefore, be a good steward of the resources that we have when we're serving others and endure uh, longer, uh, hopefully, and, and give and serve more. I hope you have a great day.